trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, to absolutely, to because, because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Welcome back, citizens of Netlandia. This is O'Reilly Radio number 168, recorded Friday, October 20th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go O'Reilly. I'm Ross Andy Cowan, and I have my usual suspects. I've got Daniel Atherton, and I've got back Fred Sims right next to me. What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to make make mistakes. But probably not so many. This is our follow the money segment, uh, the A side of the show. Uh, but if you have questions, comments, or concerns, and clearly we all have concerns, then please go ahead and send us a note at Podcast at gmail.com. Available out on the website also. You know, you can send us a form. You know, you don't need to be completely anonymous if you wish. And you can continue that trend by sending us a voicemail or a text message at 470-222-ORLY. That's 6759. 470-222-6759. Operators are standing by. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters for continuing to fund this uh, crazy endeavor of mine. That would be Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan from the Problem Addict Podcast. Thank you all very much. All right, so <clears throat> this is our Follow the Money segment. So let's uh, look at the markets. So we were dark last week, so I have two weeks to go through. Two weeks, okay? So the second week of October, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, D-J-I-A-I-A, I-A, yeah, too many letters. Uh, they closed at 22,841.01, which was up $65.62 from the week previous. Uh, I'm just going to jump down now to this week. The Dow Jones also closed at 23,163, so that's up another 65. No, that's the, that's the wrong number. Not another 65. 65, but it did close much higher, like over 100, 200, over 200. So it's continuing to break records, which is kind of surprising. Um, in fact, there's there's some interesting speculation on that as I oh, continue to read these things. Yeah, there's been fears floated this week that there's going to be a, a severe market correction happening soon. It's up 322.03. 322.03? Yep. Done. Okay, that is a big bump week yep. over week. That's that's a major bump. So uh, last week, October uh, week two, that would be on the 13th, the NASDAQ composite index closed at 6,591.51. That was up $6.15. And this week it closed at 6,600.05.07. And that's another 1356 up on top of that. So week over week, those are doing very well. Last week, the S&P 500 index closed at 2,550.93. That was down $1.14, but it recovered nicely this week, up at 2,562.10, up a whole $11.17. So overall, it's a good time to be in the stock market. Not sure for how long, but here we are. Uh, so last week, there was new economic data. The weekly initial jobless claims plummeted. This is uh, news from Zax.com, their, their commentators and analysts. So the weekly initial jobless claims plummeted to 243,000 from last week, a decline of 15,000. This marked its lowest level in as many as six weeks. Now, remember, that's also coming off of Obama's policies. So through October, we're starting to see the influx of Trump's influence on the nation, you know, in earnest, not just the executive orders that happen immediately, but the policy statements. Uh, the consensus estimate for the period was 255,000 claims. Uh, economists commented that only f a few Americans applied for unemployment benefits in this period as business resumed in Texas and Florida, with more people resuming work. 
post the recent carnage by the two destructive hurricanes. Moreover, initial claims in Puerto Rico were also lower, not because of people going back to work, but due to the absence of electricity after the island was ravaged by Hurricane Maria. Consequently, people could not file claims from the island, nor could claims be processed. As a result, the endless expect such claims to show up in the coming weeks. There is still, as of today, I believe the it was 80% of the island uh, population was still without power. And they are, can, they are now forced to drink dirty water. That's also in the news. It's, it's a massive a crisis. Are die. Yeah, it's a massive crisis, and the, the Trump administration, Trump in particular, is strutting around like a peacock, you know, saying that we did a fantastic job and patting themselves on the back, giving themselves a 10. There's so much work left to do. And he, it was not a grand response. He went down and threw paper towels. Okay. He lobbed paper towel rolls into the crowd. Which, why I, would you do that? It was the only supply he could get his little hands on. I, I still don't understand. It I, doesn't I make don't any understand sense. The, it, the thought process there. Had it been a t-shirt cannon, he, he would have done it, and it would have made perfect sense in context. I, I, I don't all care. that matters is the photo op. Yeah, yeah I mean yeah, that's yeah. really all that matters to him. Is it's there's a that bad photo, photo op. for you because a, you are a normal human being. But yeah. for him, yeah. that <laughs> is a photo of him doing the job that he says he's doing. And so, anytime anyone points out, we are still terribly behind in revitalizing Puerto Rico. He can go, but do you see this? I did awesome. Yeah, it's. He's following the the Goebbels method. If you repeat the lie long enough, it becomes truth. Uh, yeah, but, chief propagandist and all that. Um, it's still, but we we have video now. We can go back to. We can play the tape. I know we can, but he's somehow immune to that. Um. So there was also a uh, commentary just to to follow up on that week, uh, the U.S. job loss. Uh, there was a question whether or not it was Trump or climate change, and it it really was the the hurricanes. So he okay. had, he had nothing he had nothing not the job loss, but the job recovery. You know, was it uh, did it have anything to do with with his policies or whether or not it was just the massive hurricanes that were hitting? And it's the hurricanes because people okay. just can't get in. Uh, there's a link to that underneath all of our uh, uh, the debt segments. Okay, so also this week, more news from Zacks. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P 500 overcame selling pressure and eked out records on Thursday that marked the 30th anniversary of the 1987 crash. Robust third quarters uh, earnings results provided a flip to the equity market with American corporations showing signs of strength on the back of an improving economy. Political tensions in Europe and lackluster economic reports out of China failed to dent investor sentiment. On the other hand, a report that showed the Federal Reserve Governor Jerome Powell is the leading candidate for the nominee for Fed chair boosted investors' confidence. Appointment hmm. of Powell would represent a continuation of the central bank's current regime. So business as usual at the Fed, and they like it that way. So that's that's kind of what's going on there. Okay. I found that interesting. Um, so continuing, uh, let's follow the money and uh, let's uh, let's dig for some oil here. So in the oil segment, we've got last week it was at fifty one dollars and forty five cents a barrel. That was up two dollars and sixteen cents from the previous week. And this week it didn't raise nearly as much as I would have anticipated, especially from looking at the pumps. But it was fifty one dollars and eighty four cents, so up a whole thirty nine cents from the week previous. And then we get into the exchange rates. So this this is interesting. There's some some stuff going on. The euro remained uh, consistent for three weeks in a row at point eight five euros to the dollar. Uh, the Chinese yuan uh, <laughs> slipped a little bit, so the U.S. dollar is ha, is gaining on that at six point six two. It was uh, six point five nine the week previous to that, and six point five seven week previous to that. Uh, also, continuing the same trend in 
the Pacific Rim area. The Japanese yen was this week 113.53 per U.S. dollar, and it was 111.82 for U.S. dollar uh, last week. The British pound, it, uh, well, the U.S. dollar is gaining on that a little bit at uh, 0.76. Just a, just a little bit, a little hair, but that's, uh, that's better than the previous week. So we're kind of averaging out to really 0.76 for the month of October. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin's the real story as that's now it's, up. it's, well, no, it, yeah, Bitcoin's well, going Bitcoin's up and the U.S. dollar is going down in comparison. So Bitcoin right now, one U.S. dollar equals point zero 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 one seven Bitcoins. Now, for those of you that don't like the math, I just went ahead and checked. One Bitcoin equals six thousand four dollars right now. One Bitcoin. Now, that, as I was continuing to compile all this information, Bitcoin transactions apparently use so much energy that the electricity used for a single trade, that includes the manufacture of the coin itself and all that. Actually, I don't even think it does. I think it's just really going through the trading process where it's, because it's a computationally difficult thing in order to make sure that, that it's verified, that the mining was verified. Uh, it uses up enough power to power a home for a whole month. For one Bitcoin. Well, no, no, that's a transaction. That's not even, that's not making money. That's simply the transaction. We need fusion. It's, it's insane. It's insane. But that's, that's also one of the things that makes it um, possible to be valuable in this way. So it's, it's weird. It's a, it's a weird kind of thing. You know, economics professors are going to be talking about this for a long time. And that was out, out at, uh, let's see, what was this website? Oh, it didn't, uh, didn't do the link right. There it goes. And this was out at the World Economic Forum. So you guys can go, go take a look at that link. It's uh, kind of in-depth and a lot of financial stuff and, and weird. So as I was continuing to look through, of the precious metals, we usually think of gold. We think of silver. Eh, we used to think of platinum. But now, apparently, palladium has been added to that mix. So that makes sense. Just one more thing to, to keep following in the Fellowship of the Rings. So we'll see how that goes. And in the U.S. National Debt Tracker, as we continue to watch it grow. Um, and grow. I'm just going to skip over the last week. It is in the show notes. You can find it. Uh, but this week, it's... Twenty trillion four hundred and twenty-three billion eight hundred and twenty-three million six hundred and ninety-five thousand seven hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Um, of course, that's a snapshot. So, if you look now, it's already way higher. Um, so that was uh, up a total of. Let me add them together real quick in my head. That's seventy-eight billion dollars over two weeks. $78 billion. So over, over the course of two weeks, we add enough to the national debt that meets the amount of money that was added to the defense budget, which that is the hurts. entirety of a couple countries that they spend on, on defense. Multiple countries. Yeah. So the scale is just ridiculous. It's It's... It's not fathomable. It's it's just money. It's just numbers. It's not even money. It's just numbers. So, but how much of that is waste? How would you even know? I, it, it, that's an impossible question, isn't it? I, I I don't know, but again, we know that there is a significant amount of waste that goes with our military industrial complex. We we spend way too much on on certain forms of government contracts. Here's a catch-22 there, for there's you. There's fraud. Here's a catch-22 for you. Give me $10 billion, and I will find the waste. Yeah, that is the catch-22. You have to spend inordinate amounts of money to catch the fraud. Right. I don't know that you'd find the waste 
considering no, that, the amount of stories that we've done <laughs> where when reconciliations happen, there are large amounts of money mm-hmm. and no one knows where they are. Yeah. We don't know what yeah, happened just with disappeared. this. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I get the conundrum that you're presenting of in order to find the waste, it's going to cost the waste. Yeah. But <laughs> you still wouldn't find the waste. No. You'd just find a, a, a blank spot where there should have been the waste and no one can tell you where the waste went. We have better luck mm-hmm. finding dark matter than we do the financial waste. Well, either dark matter or... I'm going to mute that system. I think that's where that came from. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's either dark matter or we're actually finding more of the real matter, which we did, but that's for another segment. So we, we actually found more yes, of the actual at, matter. At, at finding matter in the universe than yeah. tracking down waste in our military industrial complex. I believe that says a lot about us as a species. I'm not sure exactly what it says, but it says a lot. We're fiscally in- irresponsible. Yeah. Now, um, also at the usdebtclock.org, which is where we got the national debt numbers, uh, they added a, se- a little strip at the bottom. And you can see that in our show notes, where I have a snapshot from the week previous and this week. So they added it this week, and it's a rotating ticker of news stories. And I was just like, oh, well, that's interesting, and click on one of them, and it gave me some of these stories. So they're not bad, and they're pulling from sources that I don't usually pull from. So, eh, not a bad idea to kind of check in on the U.S. debt clock. And you know what? I bet they probably get a link link back or something like that. So uh, help support them, because this is a valuable tool. We use it every week, that's for sure. And uh, also, it just in following the money, I found this story to be terribly amusing and one to really keep an eye out. The First Nations, which is the indigenous people to Canada, a.k.a. the Indians. The First Nations seek to raise Canada's rent after 150 years of $4 payments. (laughs) So the First Nations claim that their ancestors initially balked at what seemed like a paltry sum for their resource-rich land. Quote, So what William Benjamin Robinson said, and I'm paraphrasing, was, here's what I'll do. I'll offer you this annuity, and if the territory produces more revenue for the crown, the annuity will be increased accordingly. End quote. Said Michael Rastuli, one of the representative plaintiffs in the case. The treaty stipulates that any increase in the annuity, quote, shall not exceed the sum of one pound provincial currency in any one year, or such further sum as Her Majesty may be graciously pleased to order. End quote. More than a century after the first increase, despite petitions and appeals from the First Nations chiefs to various levels of government, the annuity remains unchanged. So this is a lawsuit pending, and uh, it's going all the way up to whatever Supreme Courts they have in Canada with some weird parliamentary thing. Oh, look. Yeah. The, 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 the natives mm-hmm. continue to be screwed over in perpetuity, mind you. Yes. By Western imperialism. Yeah, this deal was struck like 167 years ago. And was only raised, you know, after like six, 16 years later, only raised once. Yeah. However, so. I mean, I guess it's kind of good to see someone that can afford their rent based off of a minimum wage. Nice. Nice. Well, they are in Canada, so that makes some sense. But shouldn't they be paying <sighs> more because they're in Canada? Well, I don't know. Maybe it'd be a, it'd be a subsidy or something. I don't know. But they're the government, so it's the government's rent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be awesome if they got evicted. <laughs> that would be incredible. Yeah, but a nation is excised. <laughs> but that can't happen. Yes, because the First Nations don't have nuclear weapons and enough guns. 
Well, no, they, they, don't, they don't have standing because the courts that would be determining it are Canada. Trial by combat. It, it would have to be trial by combat. Absolutely. But, however, I guess that would be up to Justin Trudeau, and he's, he's in good shape. Well, That'd he's be a fight. had a bad track record with dealing with the First Nations. That is one of the things that that and his environmental policy, actually, mm. have been the two uh, black marks against him that have been hounding him his entire presidency. Yeah. Well, he's better than some of the alternatives. Oh, so, almost. Yeah. Again, I said he had two black marks. Yeah, that's not as bad. On his entire presidency. Two that I can just come off the top of my head. Not a litany that would waste your time for an entire weekend and I'd only be hitting the top of the iceberg. Exactly. Okay. So that was our follow the money segment. And there it is. <laughs> It's like I muted that. That's right. Okay, so if, if you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways you can do that. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash Radio and get early access to show content or extra content as, uh, as it becomes available. You can also make the algorithms work for us by reviewing us on iTunes to boost our ranking and get us in front of more eyeballs that way. But really, the best is use your words and tell somebody else about us. That word-of-mouth advertising is always the best. And, of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com. Or if you're the more talkative sort, again, there's that voicemail, voicemail number, 470-222-6759. It's always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at one 800 Two seven three eight two five five, available twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention, and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been a really radio part of the Random Acts Company. This work license under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Stay tuned. We're going to have a guest up real soon. See you.